Let me just say, don't take your 15 year old daughter to that show and think it's a family affair. Do this next to me, like, you're gonna love this. And then the end of what happened, I was literally had to shut down emotionally. I was like, this is not happening an inch away from me. She was next to me, she was like, you're not my father. Anyway, there was a lot of uncomfortableness. But then the rest of the show was good. But that one moment, literally I had to shut down completely emotionally. Um, let's start from the beginning. Andy, where are you from? I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yes! Oh, yeah, really? That's right. Fantastic, welcome. Is this out there? Were you like a CMU person? Um, I wasn't. I um, I went to PA Governor's School for the Arts. If you know about that, um, that which is now defunct. It was a summer like arts program, and it was it was government funded. It was really incredible. Um, it was completely free, room and board, and classes. It was basically for a summer. for gay guys to make out. Uh, ostensibly, I, mean, I, I wouldn't know back then, unfortunately. Um, but uh, but I went to that. Um, which is, now doesn't exist anymore because they've taken all the money away from the arts, you know, everywhere, which is uh, really sad. Um, and I didn't go to Carnegie Mellon, I went to the University of Michigan. I need to get away. They don't have it all anymore? They don't have it all anymore. <laughs> Governor's School does not exist in, in Pennsylvania. And when did you start, when did you start a singing and a dancing and an acting? Oh, golly. Um, I, in the fifth grade, um, I was playing Little League, and my best friend on the team, whose name was also Andy, uh, his sister was in this acting program in town, and I went with them to build sets one Saturday, and made a bunch of friends, and I joined in the fall, and we did Joseph, I was Benjamin. Oh, wow, who's the thief? Who's the thief? Yeah, Who's exactly. Could it possibly yes, be? Yes, thank you. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Go. Um, and, <laughs> and then and then that was it. I was really you were hooked. hooked. I was hooked. I got the bug. And then what was happening here? I don't know if it's tangled. What was your? Um, did you have like a, some big? Oh, some annoying bag. Sorry. Thank you. Why don't you strike that? Thank you. Um, what was happening uh, high school role wise? High school role wise. Well, my big claim to fame in terms of maybe you guys saw it. Let me know if you did. Um, I played Tevia at age seventeen. <laughs> Can you see it? Why are you laughing? <laughs> were, you, were, you, were you a size zero back then also? I was, I, I was very small. Um, I, I looked about seven years old when I was 17. Um, and, and I was just deaf yet. And I was doing an accent and no one else was. We were had like a fake beard. They did my, um, my hair and my eyebrows and like the fake beard they put on me with baby shoe polish. This white baby shoe polish and a toothbrush. And I was doing this like weird Russian accent because I was an artist, and <laughs> no one else was, and um, and I was terrific. Um, I was also in Once Upon a Mattress, which Were is a more honest? suitable role. Of course, of course okay. I was. Match. Yeah. Um, and um, and then I was in Into the Woods, but I had to drop out because I had a vocal hemorrhage during Tech Week because it was the Trying same. Trying to sing Last Midnight or Jumpy. Yeah, exactly. Trying to sing. Um, you know, your fault probably. I was the baker, um, but it was the same week as my prom, and I, you know, was on my worst behavior, and I ruined my voice and couldn't sing anymore for like a oh while. God. Yeah, who went on for you? Um, luckily, there was another like there was another boy in our program because usually there's only the one, but we had two, and so he went and did it. Okay, back to you. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Midland, Texas. Yay. Oh, I never knew that. And <laughs> where? Is it near Midland? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> but just the word Texas. Texas is so big. It's bigger than France. <laughs> My husband's from Texas, but not from. Where are you from? Midland. Is it literally in the middle? It, no, it's midway between Dallas and El Paso. So if Texas is like this, it's like here. George Bush. George found baby uh, Jessica fell on the well. Oh, wow. <laughs> a lot of things went down. <laughs> now, do national tours come through there? Did you see any big musicals going Well, they just, no, not there. We would have to go to Dallas to see them. Oh, but they have a lot of good theater yeah. there. So I saw a bunch of shows there. I saw Sally Struthers in Greece. Which was As Sandy? Ms. <laughs> Lynch. Ms. Lynch. Ms. Lynch. Ms. Lynch. Yes. Um, and uh, a lot of people were on that tour. tour. A lot of people were on that tour. Yeah. You probably like Marissa Jarmanoko or Seth Foster. Like everyone did that big yeah. tour. Jekyll and Hyde. All right. Uh, you know, went to Lubbock and saw Les Mis. Were you theater obsessed or your parents just taking you? No, I, I was somehow theater obsessed. 
I don't really know who got me into it, to be honest. I think I went to see Big River was the first play I ever saw at the community theater. And I was like, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The set was so great. Were you playing piano at the time? Mm -hmm. oh, how did you, so how did you actually start performing yourself? Um, after that, I wanted to, to, to like be involved, so I went to an audition for A Christmas Carol, and I got cast as part of Tiny Tim. I was super fat. <laughs> Why did you do Tevye? All right, go on. <laughs> you only... I like that you think of me as a Tevye, though. Well, more appropriate. <laughs> yeah, come on, Gretchen mom. Okay, go on. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and then I had to for a secret garden after that. Like Colin. Wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And then did you, did you go, but you went to Interlochen, right? Mm -hmm. So how did you manage that? that? I, I managed to talk my grandparents into, like my grandparents raised me. And I managed to talk them into letting me go to Interlock in my last years of high school and went to summer camp there as well. And who paid for it? Um, I got scholarships. Based on talent? <laughs> no, you have talent scholarships? Yeah, talent scholarships they have. Or need based. I mean, I know with, with college too, like, especially though, like, art schools, a lot of them, and I don't actually remember if it was like, I won a scholarship from the Discover card, because I like, for academic, I got academic scholarships actually. Oh, there. Really? You're good at academics? I was. Okay. I was. Now I can't like add four and five. What oh, were your SAT scores? I don't remember. Everyone that does well always calls that I don't remember. How can you not remember your SAT scores? They like define your life when you're a child. I don't know. I'm... I got a thirteen hundred. Thank now, you. Now they've changed the, the scoring, so that's irrelevant now. Right now, it's, yeah, but people our age totally appreciate it. That's kind of impressive. What was your split? Oh, yeah. uh, my split. I was way better in the verbal. Wait, I had a near perfect verbal, in fact. My parents wow, were really? Bad. Yeah, it was very good. Because um, I took Latin in high school. That's the secret to getting a good verbal. I took Latin. I took Latin. Yeah, but my math was dreadful. It was a bit awful. Two nerds. I just want to We just sit at home and speak in Latin. Exactly. Ah, ah, ah. I just want to say you're in Inchalaga, and Inchalaga is like an art sleepaway school, and. It was amazing. What was your major? They don't musical theater, did they? No, I was in. I was a drama major, theater arts. Do they do musicals though? They do musicals. Yeah, I did um, some great musicals there. I did Snoopy. I did. Who did you um, play in Snoopy? I love that show. Charlie Brown. I love that show. Where did that little dog go? Yeah, great show. I love that show. Um, <laughs> and then I did she Loves Me opposite Alexander Silver. Wow. So I got to do Vicky and Fiddler. Uh, she's amazing. Who did you play, George? Uh huh. Well, ah. And we did Merrily with Benjamin Walker was in Merrily in high school. I mean, like all my high school friends are now here. And Everyone was so talented. And uh, what other musicals did I do? A, a, a review of No Coward called Cowardly Custard. Pushing it. Yeah. Okay, so no. <laughs> and that's, a, that's a show that toured Michigan. If you can imagine rural Michigan audiences sitting through Cowardly Custard as performed by high school students. Why do you like travel? travel. <laughs> Nobody cares. Uh, okay, so then where did you go to college? I went to uh, the Juilliard School for... Is it called Juilliard? It's called the Juilliard School, I have to say it that uh, way. Um, so annoying. Okay, what was your major? Uh, I majored in drama there. And no singing at all there, ever. See, we've had the same thing in Oberlin. I don't understand the snobbery about, like, musical theater doesn't exist. Like, I don't get it. Like, why do they acknowledge musical theater? We would, like, sing, you know, like, if there was a song in Shakespeare, we would sing that. I was, like, so excited. <laughs> <laughs> would you be shocked, like, one of your acting people had, like, an amazing voice that like, you wouldn't have known it? Well, I remember we did have this one singing class, uh, second year, and everyone had to, like, bring in and sing a song. And people were like, don't sing at all, mostly. And I was like, yeah. And the, the, when you would see somebody who would sing, you'd be like shocked. You've been with them for two years and have no idea they sing. So what would you do? Is that what, you know, when we were when we community jumping over them, but over them, we had to take all these academics as well as a conservatory. Did you have to take academics or was it no. literally just? Well, it, no, it's a conservatory. We took an aesthetics class, and like, which was basically like we read a bunch of sort of classic books, like, you know, Plato and stuff like that. Uh, Madame Bovary, and it's sort of, it's sort of like a literature class. And then you would write a paper on it? Yeah, you would write papers, but that was that class was like one day a week, maybe two days a week. Like no hour. science? No science at all. No math? math. <gasps> no, I mean, that's why uh, I was really good at academics in high school. Then. I was like a big physics guy, now. What would you do all day? Like marbles in the mouth? 
Like, all those <laughs> there was, there was a lot hate. of like movement and a lot of like breathing and speech and rolling around. Like you weren't allowed to wear shoes for the first year. Like it was black tights and like t-shirt every day. Um, a lot of checkoffs. Stretch. <laughs> Just dragging around a stool. That sounds wonderful. Uh, okay, so musical theater, were you at Michigan Musical Theater major? Yes, I was. Thank you. Okay, so what was that like? That sounds a lot more It was fun. amazing. It was amazing. Um, I was there um, with um, Darren Chris. You guys know Darren Chris? He was in my class. He was a drama major. Um, but we ended up being really good friends because I injured myself on my first day of our ballet class, a freshman ballet. I injured myself so irrevocably that I couldn't take ballet for the rest of the year. So I had to go into tech class with the drama majors, and so I got really close with them, and that's when me and Darren met. Wait, I want since. to know what injured you in ballet class that badly. I, did, I injured a nerve in my back, which made my foot paralyzed for like months. What did you what were you trying to do? I, I'm just a really terrible dancer. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, plie, like it was like pliés. It was it was 101. I mean it was freshman ballet on the first day and I hurt myself. It was that roll call. They were like, hey, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god. But weren't you scared that you could like not have a foot that moved? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a big problem, but it turned out okay. <laughs> did you have to do physical therapy? Oh yeah, all of it. I did like MRIs, physical therapy. It was a big to do. It was oh, a big problem. God. It was your roommate like, oh I've got the weird roommate. Like, yeah. I'm sure I did. Yeah, the one with the foot. Yeah. So, then, but then, so you hung out with Darren during tech class, which is what you learn to do like stage. You um, when you're at Michigan, you have to work in all of the departments uh, in the theater like during your four years there. So you have to work in electrics and work in the wardrobe. You learn all the departments. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a class that sort of gives you an overview of all of that. Like I know what a grommet is because of that class, which is the like metal part in a curtain that like attaches to the yeah. That's right. What, what's, what was an actual fun one? Natural fun one. Um, <laughs> you know what? I took um, I took I took uh, spotlights like really seriously because it's the one department where you can like you feel like you're part of the show a little bit when you're doing a spotlight because it's like a live element and you're like you're lighting the person singing the solo. So I really like would get really into it and like sometimes you'd have to like ballyhoo the lights, which is when you do them in like a figure eight style and you feel like you're performing in a weird way. But is that like really a course? Like I have a four month course. It was part of the, it was part of, it was one of the things you had to do like along the way. In the, in the but how class. long was spent on spotlight? Um, I don't know. It was part of the, uh, the electrics. The great, over, not more than a week. Probably not more than a week. I can't promise that, but it was thorough spotlight training. I could really do it. I wish we could have that kind of stuff. Actually, like, so like, now, you know, you, you, so many times having just worked with actors and you're saying, oh, the spotlight's been, like, no, I, some actors have, like, no idea all the stuff that goes into actually getting them seen and heard. So, like, I actually, you know what that is. It's really, yeah, I really don't. People always go, you feel your life. And I really, I don't ever feel alive. So I, I wish I could spot like for all my dishing. You feel like, when is the next course? No, I never know where I am. And I was like, you feel it? I'm like, I just feel light everywhere. I don't actually feel my light. That's a beautiful way to live. It is? You feel light everywhere. I'm always in the course. Okay, so back to it. So, um, did you, you went to, um, wait, you went to Juilliard. And um, were you trying out for shows while you were there? You're not yeah, allowed. I'm not allowed to try out for shows, but I did. I tried out for um, Williamstown. And I went and did a summer at Williamstown and got my equity card. Did they find out? Well, it was like a summer like apprenticeship program. But while I was there, I got a card. So it was fine because it was summer. I went back to the second year. And at the end of that, I auditioned for Big River at the roundabout and got that job. But it end, was going to end because limited engagement before I went back to school. And then it extended. So I got, the day it extended, I got this call. And I'm like, hi, this is Kathy. This is Kathy. <laughs> The Juilliard School. And we noticed the show you in has extended, so we just need to know if you'll be coming back to school in the fall or not. And I was like terrified and to know what to do and Well why what would you have to miss just Wednesday matinees? You'd have to be sick. No, because you're there like at Juilliard like in class from nine AM until eleven PM. Doing what I ask. Like you're doing Uncle Vanya. Always doing on the bodies. It's like you're in a constant state of trying to get to Moscow. You, you never get to Moscow. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. Wait, so what did you do? So I I wrestled with it for a while and got some really good advice from the, our director Jeff Calhoun, and uh, he said, whatever decision you make, it should scare the shit out of you. And I said, you know. I'm 
the scariest thing is to leave school. And so I dropped out and continued to run, and then I'm a dropout. Well, why is that the best advice, really? Should, I mean, I, I know that in terms of writing, like, oh, first me. As an artist. But wouldn't it have been better like, just to finish two months of Big River? Wouldn't it have been better to get all the rest of the training to finish, Vanya? <laughs> <laughs> I never want to really finish, Vanya. You know? uh, no, we want to have it always it's, always. it's about the non events. No, so it, it's can't just really... sort of like, I, I was going to really sort of. It's a hard place that, that school oh, is. Hard, that it's just very um, emotionally hard, so. Everybody, I everybody thought about the wings and the like, psychiatric ward with Juilliard students. Like, no, shit. Sure. <laughs> no, no, that's what options are. The windows don't open. Because, well, really, I don't believe it. They don't. Because people are, if you feel like, because the is the kind of teachers like, I'm going to tear you down, then make you feel better when you finally graduate. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, I don't think it's like malicious. I think it's different now than it used to be, to be honest. Um, but it's just a really high pressure environment because you're trying to, like, you're sort of told, well, you've been here because you have these skills that we, we think you could be an artist. And so we want you to take yourselves apart, put yourself back together. And some people never get back together, actually. Downer. No. That's, that's like making some, and then some people are Jessica Chastain. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, so, okay, the pun. Yeah. Um, okay, that's interesting. So you want, you want, I want to speak in my career. I don't want well, to it that. started and I was like, okay, I can go back to school for two years and, and do, because the first two years are like training, training, training. Starting the third year, like you start doing shows. And I was like, well, I'm doing a show. Yeah. You know, so I really feel that I'm really glad that I went for the time I, I did, and then I didn't. You know, I had a manager, and so you know, it wasn't didn't have to like go to showcase. You know, it's like the stuff yeah. that I miss. I felt okay missing. I mean, I sort of missed being with my class, but I lived with I still live with one of my my uh, my roommate was a student, so I saw them a lot. Oh, yeah. and what about a day job? Did you have to make money somehow? Um, after a big river? Yeah, yeah. It's roundabout. Right <laughs> they don't pay the bills. No. So what did you do? What was your day job? I, I mean, I sort of did a variety of like random, like moved people's apartments and. You did? Yeah, like random stuff like that. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. My mom is moving. I'll talk to you privately later about that. Because it's like, I am out of place right now. Okay, accidentally. Okay, so wait, so when you graduated, first of all, did your first I start also working? dropped out of school. <laughs> What's happening? I know, I know this is not a good message to this Periscope. Is live. Stay in school, kids. Yeah. <laughs> but I also, I also dropped out, but I, I got through three years before I. Why did you drop it? I left to work. I left to do the first spring awakening. <laughs> Dating myself here. I did both of them. Me and Krista are the only two that did both of them. Oh my god, how cool. How'd you get that gig? Um, I went to an open call in Chicago, which was the nearest city to Ann Arbor. Um, and I waited in line with people that I'm still friends with, like very successful met them online? actors. Met them like in the line, wow. not like online the way we say online now. No, online, I am. like in That's the line. So cute. <laughs> Waiting to audition for Carrie Gardner for Spring Awakening. Um, and I had a call back the next day. For, what did you sing? I sang um, "The Blower's Daughter" by Damien Rice. Uh, yeah. Oh my God! There's some Damien Rice fans here. Um, yeah, I sang that. <laughs> <laughs> It's not from a musical. I know. I was like, I don't know which show that's from. Okay, go on. <laughs> um, um, and yeah, so I had a call back the next day that I didn't hear anything for like six months, and then wow. suddenly I was in. I got called for final callbacks um, for Broadway, um, and I was there with Jeremy Jordan. That's where we met, and I will never forget this. Jeremy, so we were doing. Um, they, we were doing a song, um, which I, I won't say because it has a curse word in the title, but there was chairs involved in me and this chair choreography, and Jeremy broke his chair, and I was like, he's going to get it. This trick is going to get it. Because it's like, so so much. And they were like, ooh, he broke his chair. They were so impressed. I was like, oh, God. Um, but he didn't get it. I uh, <laughs> that's the one only time I've ever gotten anything instead of Jeremy Jordan. So. <laughs> the, same, the same role you were up for? Yeah, we were up in the same role. And was this original cast or replacement cast? This was replacement cast, and I ended up, so they were looking for somebody to, Johnny B. Wright, who originated Honcho on Broadway, got a film, it was gonna be, they needed like a vacation swing for him, basically. So that's what I was up for. And then, so when I left that day, I was, they, their rhetoric was pretty strong that I was gonna be involved, that they, you know, they hadn't made me an offer yet. And then they called back, and said, um, we actually want to continue for the tour because the tour was just starting. And so the one job was going to be like a month on Broadway or like the full run of 
the tour and stuff, so I did. So I never did Broadway, um, but I did I did the first national, I opened it. And was it the kind of thing where everyone's 20 years old, so every single night is like, oh my god, I was drinking, I can't do the show, my throat hurts. So well, everyone was 20, so everyone was drinking every single night, but they were invincible. Like, everyone would show up at work and, like, sound incredible. Because, oh, really? Like, yeah, because they had that youthful, like, whatever. Like, it was, it was a, a huge party the whole time, but the show was amazing, so it was kind of great. When people out of town were at other towns, like, how dare you bring this dirty show to our city? Oh, yeah, absolutely. People, what, what my favorite was, so I played Hanshin, who has uh, the infamous gay scene in Act 2. The same um, part you're playing now? The same part I'm playing now. Wow. wow. We'll get to that in a minute. It's like, um, it's like Carol Channing. I know. Yes. It's Happy Rigby of Spring Awakening. Um, <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, I had that scene, so people would get up and leave during that scene, which at that point, they had been through my junk, which is my monologue in Act 1, which Hanshin is performing an activity that you don't normally see on stage. They've gotten through, like, the two songs with the swear words in them, they've gotten through the sex scene at the end they of Act 1. They've gotten through the whipping. They've gotten through the whipping, they've gotten through the girl getting molested, they've gotten through the sex scene again at the top of Act 2. Um, they've been through so much. But the, the two boys kissing was that was the end. And he would storm out in droves. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so depressed. Back to you. So, um, drop out, you're moving drop furniture, out. and then what was your next big gig? Um, the next show I did, actually, shortly after, I did got a reading, like, during during the end of Big River of Lestat the musical. Oh, I remember wow. that. <laughs> like, first reading of that. Uh, that I was promptly fired. And then... Uh, By Alton John? No, I wasn't fired, I just wasn't. Ask back. We've all been there. I'm inspired. Um, I'm theater. I was also like, I was 20, and I was like playing opposite James Barber, and it was seemed wrong. Oh, time. like you were like the two yeah. vampires? So, um, that's okay. And then I got this job, uh, a musical called Bear. Oh, nice! Right. Right. And um and then and then yeah, that was sort of that was a tiny off Broadway thing. So you were moving during the day, moving furniture during the day. And then uh and doing that. Well people well, storming out of that show, that's a big gay show. No, no it's I mean for this thing in New York, like every show in New York is a big gay show. So <laughs> I, I don't think anybody minded, but it was that 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 was a really fun time doing that play with those People, everybody was. I mean, it was like you know, everybody was between eighteen and twenty-five, and going out every night, and it was wild. We had our. I remember, like, we had our opening night party at Therapy, had just opened. <laughs> <That's a good laughs> yeah. Did any of your Juilliard teachers come and see you in this? No, none of my Juilliard teachers have ever seen you. They're busy. They're like they're like working. They are. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh -huh. yeah. I should be Okay, um, so after Spring Awakening, what did you have to do? Any day jobs? Um, golly, no, you know what I did? So I actually was surprisingly responsible for myself, knowing myself, and I saved a good amount of money um, from Spring Awakening because we were on, we were one of the first shows on that tiered touring contract. Oh, no. So we really weren't making much at all, but to like a 20 year old, it was a, a fortune. Um, and we had per diem, so I, I had a roommate the whole time I was on tour, and then I moved to the Heights. So I was able to like save up a, a good little amount of money, and I just lived on that for like years. And I actually was coming to the end of it um, right when Michael and I had like just started dating. I was broke as a joke, and I was doing Carrie the Musical off Broadway, and that closed. And I was in this deep panic because I was flat broke. I was coming to the end of my spring awakening savings, and I was going to move to Los Angeles for the summer um, and like work at a bar or something and get back, like, for free, like, live in Michael's house for free, basically, and get back on my feet, and then, because I was supposed to do an off-Broadway show in the fall, and my last audition before I left town um, was for Smash, because I was, like, had my one-way ticket booked to Los Angeles, but I had this one audition left at Chelsea, and so I went, and there was a callback and a callback, and then I was testing, and I got the call that I got cast in Smash in the, in LAX, in Baggage Claim, I had moved to LA, and I had $54 to my name in my bank account, and I took a picture of my, like, of my, I, you know, my little bank statement, because I was like, I need to never forget how close I came to total ruin, and then that job really <laughs> saved the day. Wow, and then how, how soon before I began filming? It was like a couple of weeks, I mean, it was... Sort of lish. Yeah, it was really fast. And like, but I had to borrow money from my mom to get to my first paycheck. Oh. Ouch. How, how steady was the money from Smash? Was it every week? 
It was, uh, we got paid per episode, uh, because it was a series regular, so it, it was like a two week per episode um, shoot, so at the end of two weeks I'd get, you know, some money. But it was TV money, so it was pretty, pretty oh my good. God, it's called actual money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I miss it, I gotta say. In these early days, what, do you remember any bad auditions you had? Like, what was one of your worst auditions? <laughs> a lot of them. A lot of them are really bad. In terms of what? You being unprepared? Or... Uh, no, just like, you know, you sort of go in for everything. Whether Now I feel like I go in, sometimes I'll say, I, that's not me. That's not my job. Somebody else should go in and it's going to do that great. And so I'll sort of like... But back then I felt like I was just auditioning for like anything and everything. Like, you know. Dream Girls? Ain't Miss the Haven. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, So... I definitely had some just, I, I'm sure I just like auditioned I was incredibly wrong for, and yet I would just put all the stress and weight of, I still do this, you know, but I have to get this job, I need a job. And then, were you, had, were you ever, you seem very organized, were you ever unprepared for an audition? You seem like that would never be you. I'm usually pretty prepared for an audition. I, I remember I went to an audition once for, um, this was before Big River though, for uh, a little night music was being done at New York City Opera, yes. Scott Ellis was directing, and I had like, <coughs> kind of, few times for it, and I was singing for some time. I was like 19. For Henrik? For Henrik, oh, like God. singing that big note, like doing the whole thing. And I like, worked on it so hard and like did it. And then I like did the scene, and then Scott came up and he's like, just so you know, always use the sides. Like, after you've done the scene? After I've done the scene. He's like, use the sides. He's like, I know, you know the lines, but and I was like, oh, I fucked up. Big time. He may have give you a hint for the future. He was, he was, but that, that really, I was like. I and then you had to sing after that? Um, what you I had already sung. Uh, now, did you always use the sides? Yeah. Yeah, it just yeah. Matters, it reminds people that you're on an audition. Yeah, well, I mean, and especially watching. Sides are the script. Yeah, like the, the scenes you have to do with the audition. And watching auditions, too, now that I've been directing, it's sort of, it, it is a thing where if somebody comes in and they do the scene, memorized, and say, oh, well, that's the performance you're going to get. As opposed to, oh, this is their approach to the material mm -hmm. when they have the... He was helping you, but he hindered you. And what about you? Any horrible auditions? <laughs> oh, it's countless, yeah. Um, I, I one time was auditioning for a Shakespeare film. Um, and Sounds the, horrible. It was horrible. And the night before, I got in this, like, historic fight with my roommate and kicked Wait, him out of roommate? the house. No, no, no. Oh. My actual <laughs> roommate at the time. I won't speak his name ever again. Wait, um, what was the fight about? I want to hear that I part. really, <laughs> truly can't tell you. But, um, so, anyway. We got in this major fight, and I was up all night long. I called Michael in London. He was doing Aspects of Love in London. This would be a year or so before we would begin to date. This is when we were just friends. Um, and so I stayed up all night fighting. And so I still remember that. Call. And the audition was at it was at like nine thirty or ten in the morning. So it was too early to call my agents and have them call and be like, he got sick or something. Like he isn't coming. So I couldn't just not show up. So I just decided to stay up for the rest of the night and do like the work that I hadn't been doing on the monologues. And this wasn't much time. This was like, you know, maybe another <laughs> an hour. Like it was like five in the morning by the time I even like got back to my apartment. Um, and so I show up at the thing, I'm starting, I'm playing Juliet, weirdly. And so I'm doing Juliet's monologue and I like just totally go up and I'm like, floundering and it's on camera so like they can see just every twitch in my face uh -huh. and the casting girl like touches my shoulder and goes it's okay and I burst into tears oh! on camera oh! and I say I'm sorry I have to leave and I left and I cried on the street <laughs> so that was a pretty good one I had two more one was I was once in the final callbacks for, for a role and it was a famous director and I was really really nervous to audition for this director and I walk in the room, and this is my final callback. Um, and I walk in the room, and she's holding my headshot. And um, I had been uh, trying something with my hair and whatever. And um, as so I walk in, she's holding it, and she looks at me, and she goes, What happened? <laughs> that was one. And then another one was I was auditioning for uh, another like famous show with a famous high note at the end of the famous song. Um, <laughs> And I am singing the song for the director. This is my final callback for the director. The full team is there. Um, and I go for the high note, and it just like doesn't happen. I go, nope, don't have it. And the piano has to like sort of peter out. Like I'm supposed to be holding this note. And I go, nope, I don't have it. I don't, ha I don't have it. And the director sort of looks at me, and she goes, cool. Uh, I think we're good. <laughs> oh, she missed 
want to try again? No. She goes, oh, cool. I think we're good. So what's cool about this? Cool. Double talk. <laughs> Those are my bad auditions. Oh, God. But there are more, too. Oh. Of course, I have to know what song it was. I thought it was Goodbye from Catch Me If You Can. No. That I nailed, but didn't get cast. <laughs> okay, so back to this clown. So, um, uh, we were saying Big River, and then, uh, when did I first see you then? When did I first see you in? Lily Pippin? That one night event? No, I must have seen you before then. I don't know. What uh, did you do on Broadway after Bear? What did you do after Bear? Uh, I did that after Bear, after Bear so. Was it, it must have been Pippin. It was like a one night concert. He was so good in it. I remember. It was really fun. It's really fun. That it, there was a few in a row that they did for World AIDS Day. That Pippin concert, Secret Garden, um, uh, uh, Children of Eden, mm -hmm. and they had, they had like rotating narrator, um, uh, uh, leading players. Leading players. So it was like Kate Schindel, uh, Ben Marine, Ben Marine, Rosie O'Donnell. But in the original piece, Rosie was like, "Join us." <laughs> <laughs> Why did he take it up a third? <laughs> um, but Julian Marini was frustrated. Yeah. He's great. He's the so great. Yeah. Man, man was in that. Oh my god, he was so great. He was so good. And uh, Darius the Hoss was in it. Yeah, you, Darius. I think like really, really great people. That was, that was a great concert. That's what, I guess it was part of our side. Then we did the Rosie Cruise together, that weird cruise to nowhere. We did. I replaced <laughs> Billy Porter on that weird Naturally. Day. That's the same as Billy. You can't get Billy Michael. <laughs> you were amazing though, Anna. That was fun. That was like, it was, we left on a Friday, got back on a Sunday, right? It was like a little, it was, it was, it was like, Rosie was launching a ship. Yeah. And then, so then what was your, oh, Bob Dylan musical. Uh-huh, that was the last time I was yeah. on Broadway. I love that. Probably the last time I will ever be on Broadway. <laughs> you love that? You're the one. I liked it better than the other one, than the first one. What was the first one? The Billy Joel one. Oh, moving oh, out. No. I think Why was he a dog with that. spice? What was the plot? You better explain that, Chad. <laughs> explain it? Yes. I fucking no. Twilight Star could be like, I think this is like blue. Yeah, and then she'd like tell us how awful we were. But it was that was that was crazy. And we worked on that show forever. We rehearsed it with our contract, like in studio in Harlem for months and like and you weren't dancing you were, I mean we sort of were uh, yeah I mean by the end I was but it was trampolines people were getting injured and it was crazy that it was it took place in a circus on a circus like a dystopian circus sort of in the in, 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 it said in the program the time and place was like in a dream between awakenings <laughs> it's like never it says so there's nothing to hold on to it was it was between awakening and sleep between awakening and sleep <laughs> Oh, I know that Twilight. Oh, that. She's here. She's like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if we need the mics. Here's right. Yeah. Here we have you. Right. Yeah. Now. I'm over. I'm literally back there. Filming. The mic's not working. Oh, none of them are working. Um, what? What? So we're just talking for a second. We were dogs in the whole show. Like that's what our. I wasn't the dog. Someone else was. <laughs> I was a. I played a character named Coyote though. Ah, so you were related to a dog. I was sort of. Sort of related so then, to at what point were you like, wow, this is crazy? Or were you like, well, this is amazing? It was just so nuts, and we were working so hard, and I was singing so much. And I remember that, like, on, oh, I got sick right before opening, and so I was like, take steroids, so I was like, out of my mind. And then we read the reviews, and I was like, oh, it is the piece of shit I thought it was. <laughs> it was terrible. I remember the one person who liked it, it was like, this is amazing. I got high before it, and I totally <laughs> A producer, by the way, of the show. One of the producers. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it was fun and terrible, but there were some moments of true beauty in that show. Oh, well, yeah, the, I mean, the, the, the dancers. The dancers were incredible. John Salia yeah, is amazing. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, was amazing. Uh, this one dancer, Charlie Hodges, did this dance to Tambourine Man underneath the moon. It was so beautiful what he did. I'll sort of take that away. And we met at Open Nights. And we met at Open Nights. So. Wait, that was Thank God for that show. Before the London phone calls? Oh, yeah. That's when we met. We were friends for years before we were together. Five, six years. She met Open Night. Now, what were you doing Open Night? I was at Open Night because my college roommate, not the roommate that I got in the fight with, another roommate, um, my college roommate uh, went on leave to be the swing. He was this great, like, acro tumbler dancer guy. He's still working. He, he's in, like, two shows a year, I feel like. Um, and, uh,. Yeah, so I was his opening night date because oh. his family couldn't make it for some reason. Oh. Me and my other best friend from college 
travel to New York to like go see our friends Broadway show that he wasn't even in because he was a swing, but we went to opening night. And we met an opening we night. We met at the, at the Roseland Ballroom at the opening Aww. night. And rest in peace. Why did you not ask each other out? Uh, it wasn't on the table. It wasn't on the table. Why was it on the table? I don't know. It's just like speak. Well, like, I, 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 I didn't know him. I don't know. We just met, like, through friends. And, but then why the friendship for so long? Why not after like a week? But well, because I, it was, we were meant to be together. We were. I also, Michael's, do you know, Michael's my first boyfriend. Michael's my first and only boyfriend. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I like that you said and only. Well, currently. I mean, oh. <laughs> That's fine. It'll work out more. <laughs> He's totally not available. Wait, so backtrack. So then, so what was your first Broadway show? Les Mis. That was like a year, two years ago. I know. Wow, Rabba. And you were Marius? I was. How many times did you crash and burn on? Da, 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 da. <laughs> no, that I didn't crash and burn on because they took it up a half step. For oh, they did? Because I didn't have that many. Oh, oh but so then you... I would crash and burn on the other one. Oh, very words they got the Oh, okay, anyway, I crash and burn on that sometimes. Wait, and one time I fell all the way down the stairs going into the ABC cafe, like tumbled down the entire flight of stairs, like head for no hiding it. And then the next line is, Marius, what's wrong today? <laughs> Was it fun to like sing the stuff you listened to like growing up? I actually didn't really grow up with that show, weirdly. I um it's very I, I didn't, no, I really didn't. Because my um my family, like we didn't have that cast album, so therefore I didn't know it. Like we well, why didn't you buy it with your own allowance money? Because I just didn't I didn't see it until I was like in college. Like I just didn't know it. I didn't I was not exposed. Everybody in Michigan wasn't like sitting around like No, we were all singing like rent and like you know, oh, 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 what is that, Red Shane? Come on. Amazing. All right, so they basically have our first three. Okay, so you had a really, did you learn it like for doing the show? Yeah, I remember in my in one of my callbacks, um, they were like, oh, um, could you sing, you know, Red and Black? And I was like, I, you didn't give me that in the packet. They're like, you don't know it? I was like, no, like, I, you didn't give me that song. I don't know how it goes. Like, I had to sit there and learn it. But then the music director was really appreciative of it, actually, because there were things um, in the score that he said that like no Marius had ever like actually sung what was written before because they'd all just sort of like learned the you know the machine of it um, so I was just learning it note perfect because I was learning it like it was a new show and then yeah but Cal, Cal told me the first Cal said the first day of rehearsal they were like at the end of the day hit it and like everyone in the cast knew it but like her yeah and me and like the lead like all the principals were not because the cat, the show had been a tour before it came to Broadway, and much of the ensemble of the show, and it had also played in Toronto, this production, and so much of the ensemble was from either the tour or Toronto or both. So they not only knew the show just from like growing up with it, but they knew like the arrangement. They had been like music directed in it. So on the first day of rehearsal, they yeah they started like the downbeat of the score, and we sang through like up through like Casey had to sing "I Dream a Dream" in front of everybody, and she like didn't know it yet, you know? Like, yeah, and she, like, everyone was glaring. She calls it Broadway bullying. They were all like. And they couldn't believe the leads didn't know it. She's like, I don't know the show. Yeah, it was it was a weird experience. So poor Casey was like, I dreamed the dream. Yeah, she so like, we're all like timidly. Yeah. Oh my. And what was the fun part about doing that show? Um, working with Nikki James. She's become uh, like my best friend. She's in our wedding. She's we had like the greatest time together. And they would say just like the filthiest stuff t to each other, like right before we'd run on stage for um in my life. The story of what she said that before before at the end of the day. Oh, she. So we're, so we're all in the in the ensemble when we weren't the principals. Like all the principals in Les Mis are like various, you know, beggars and things. Before you see them as their their principal later on, um, which they didn't tell me when I was auditioning. So I thought I wasn't coming in for an hour in the show. You know, like Mary's doesn't come in for an hour. Right? Like, this is gonna be amazing. Like I'm gonna like be up there steaming and having a tea in a row. And they're like, so this is where you sit in the boat. And Look get down. Uh, <laughs> So we're like, um, we're, we're in these rags at the top of at the end of the day waiting to like make our, our beggars entrance and you know, we, we we're supposed to like ad lib like there was like this rumble of like blah, 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 you know or like this unrest and then we come out and we start singing and Nikki and we're all it's you know the winter like the shirt in your back doesn't keep out the chill you know it's like the winter yeah and these sliders open and we come out and right before the sliders open Nikki goes is anyone else freezing and then like, <laughs> like in character like because it was winter time <laughs> like not as Nikki as her beggar it's <laughs> on the news um, okay and they got to cut down your show it was only three hours right delicious it was three, yeah, it was three hours exactly. That's the best. 
bad. But sometimes if we got like indulgent in our choices, the band wouldn't be able to stay for the bows, like because they had to leave. <laughs> Otherwise, they have to pay them like this big jump step in salary for overtime. Oh my god! Right. So like we would bow and you know we do like opera bows and then they would play out like da da da, and everyone would leave and we'd wave at the audience. And um, but sometimes they would have to leave, so we'd like we'd gesture to the pit and there'd be nobody there. So we'd <laughs> And then, like, we'd leave in silence. It was really awkward. That would happen a lot. Don't leave in silence. Okay, so um, let's get to um, Spring Awakening, which I saw for it open. I loved it. Yeah. I thought it was so well directed. <laughs> How did I what? How did you get it? Were you chosen to direct it? Did you want to direct it? What I, happened? We, so, Andy had the idea. We, really? Uh, yes. Well, you said this Deaf West production, you said, I need a job, put me in a show. No, <laughs> that's sweet of you to say. Um, no, I said, Michael, Deaf West had, like, spoken to Michael, I guess, because Michael was just sort of, like, getting started with directing. He had directed this really great Laronde, uh, this play out in L.A., and was looking for something oh, to do. Hello Again, we call it. Hello Again, we call it, in music the music theater world. Um, and, um, and, you know, he worked with Deaf West twice before as an actor, and so was thinking about going to them and, and directing something, and I had had this idea about Spring Awakening, because when I was doing Spring Awakening at the Amundsen in LA, Michael was doing Pippin with Deaf West at the Marte Perform. They share a, a complex, and we as a cast had gone and seen the rehearsal, and so we've been kicking, at that day, I think, I was like, oh, wouldn't this, that be the perfect show for oh, Deaf West? Yeah. So, yeah, the Deaf West asked me if I wanted to do something, and we were chatting about it, so we chat about things, and... And I said, what if, why don't you do Spring Awakening? Why don't we do it? And um, we sat and sort of hashed out who would be deaf, who would be hearing, wow. why do it? And I, I really didn't want to do a musical with them unless I was able to acknowledge, or they were able to acknowledge that there are deaf characters I found really important. Um, because in both in Big River and in Pippin, we were sort of living in a world where it was everyone like knew, casting. It was like colorblind, everyone knew sign language, and it was a celebration of the language and an incredible thing, but but I thought it has to be, there has to be a reason to do it, because like, that isn't the real world, and I wanted to sort of, it to be more realistic. So, so why did you decide that Ben Lin is deaf? Um, well, because we thought in the first scene that the reason why she isn't told the truth about how to have children would, could be as simple as what if she's deaf, her mother's hearing, so maybe the mother had to learn sign language for her daughter, and she actually just doesn't know how to tell her. That makes sense. Wow. So, I, and so she wow. says heart, because that's the sign she would have learned from her daughter. But she wouldn't have learned anat anatomical signs from her daughter. Or be able to probably tell them just because of the time and place. Um, and so that's sort of how it started, and then we went through all the different characters, and for more, it's was is deaf um, because in this time, if a deaf student, uh, American uh, sign language in general was banned, so kids weren't allowed to sign. They had to learn to lip read and to speak. It's called the oralism method. Wait, where was it banned? Worldwide. Wow. So there was the, a thing. Who banned it? Not a, not okay, a deaf so, person. Well, no, of course not. Um, there was a thing called the Milan Conference that happened about ten years before Spring Awakening was written in the eighteen eighties. To place in Milan, it was a meeting of the educators of deaf. They all traveled to Milan for this big symposium on how best to involve deaf students in the sort of work world and and sort of social life. And it was decided that the only way to properly integrate was through forcible oralism. So having to lip read, having to be taught to phonate and speak, and therefore Anything that went against that sign language would discourage speech, so it was banned band. completely. Um, meanwhile, this the, this meeting was like all hearing people. There were two deaf people we at the conference, of course, because that's you know, and that I mean, and the Spring Awakening it's the same thing. It's like these people are making decisions for for others. Um, so, and it was interesting that if the kids couldn't succeed at oralism, they were called oral fail. Failures, and Moritz is the word that sends him to his demise. Is that very <coughs> word? Wow, so much research. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's a thing nobody knows about this Milan. I mean this was going on until the fifties. When it, when did sign language come back? Forties, fifties. Oh wow! And so there, there's like an entire there are people who come to the show who are deaf and 
still don't really sign because they were a victim of that time. Wow. And it's the, the sort of ripple effect is still is still very present. But no, he talks about it. It's called the dark age of death culture. Okay, A, fascinating. B, how amazing is it that you got Ronnie Matlin? How the hell did that happen? Um, she came to see our 99C production in LA and really liked it. And then I like wrote her on Twitter and I was like, do you want to go to lunch? And I took her to lunch and like, begged her to do it. She has, she has like extreme stage fright. Hadn't done a play since she was 17. Wow. Since the, the stage version, where she, I think, was a smaller role or understudied in Children of a Lesser God. It was like the last time she did that. Wow. Cool, right? Yeah. And uh, she was like, oh, I can't do this. It's too, I can't memorize lines. Like I, it, it, so it was like, and she said no. And so we did the second production in LA. And then I came back to her and I was like, you have, I said, Marley, you have to do this. Because we're going to Broadway. We're going to Broadway. You have to do this. You can lead this company. It's a small role. I promise you, I'll take care of you. It would be amazing. Be and and, um, and she's phenomenal. And, and she's now like she's like making her Broadway debut. And it's That's phenomenal. crazy. But is she now saying, oh my God, you were right. I'm so blessed to be saying yeah. no. She, and you know, she said to me the other day, she was like, this is the happiest I've ever been. Ah. Uh, she's, she's so... I don't know if that's true or not, but, but she's incredible. I mean, every, I, I went to the show on Tuesday and afterwards she was like, do, uh, do you have any notes ring? Just, just, just text me, anything, anything. And she's just so, I, I think she has the bug now, so I hope we see her on stage much more. What gave you the idea of having the chicken in the wheelchair? Did you just audition? Or you she like, just auditioned, she's the best person for the job. And then, how, but who like auditions in a wheelchair? Like, it's just so Allie rare. Stoker. she rolled right Woo! in. <laughs> Shocking. She no, she's she is amazing. It just takes such clips, but it'd be like I'm gonna just for musical in a wheelchair. Like I can't believe that she thought there was a chance. It's amazing. She's and the first person on Broadway ever in a wheelchair. That's it's it. so and she probably, she's so good. So she's, she's so good. stunning and has yeah. like the best voice. But her voice is crazy. Well she came into the audition and she was like, How is everybody? I'm so excited to be here. Has and she I been auditioning thought, before? How beautiful is that? Yeah. She did the uh, spelling bee a paper mill. She was in. She played Olive. Oh wow! Oh, and she was on the Glee project. Yeah. She was on Glee. She's she's great. Why is she not effing Nessa Rose? Because mm -hmm. she stands she up. She stands up. Girl, she tells a great story about the Glee show. <laughs> she said, and I was like, well, Allie, just stand up. <laughs> wow. She's like, great, Michael. That will work. Really good direction. <laughs> so exciting. Okay, so now how would your life change now that you have a show that you're directing on Broadway? Um, I don't have to go to the show every night. Is that a nice feeling? It's so great. So but great. do you feel like I'm being a director? No. I mean, You're a Broadway show. Yeah, but, but I mean, I, I feel incredibly lucky that I had great material, a phenomenal company. I somehow begged, borrowed, and stole these incredible designers and people to be part of it. And, um, and you know, we just try to get everybody to tell the same story. So I, I feel very lucky and... and um, I feel very lucky to have done that, and it's sort of been my dream always to to direct and uh, and to be able to do it and to, to give a stage to these artists who are so often overlooked, yeah. who are incredible. I mean, I think Sandra May, Frank, Daniel Durant are are like fucking stars, and and the fact that people are getting to see them nightly on Broadway is so incredible. And that, like Ali and 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 you know we're making twenty five Broadway debuts on the company. And, this was a show that when we came up with it, we like I bought the costumes. We did it in 99 Seat Theater. We rehearsed at my house, like raised money on Kickstarter, and a year to the day from our first performance in LA, we opened the Broadway. Like, wow! It doesn't happen, so I. Totally <laughs> oh my God. Um, all right, it's crazy, but I need Michael bring music, so I'm going to even home. I'm gonna sing something from Hunchback, which I just. Woo! Yeah.